Hello and welcome to Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany. And these two little characters here are Pedro and Rosa. And they sometimes help me in my videos to explain things or to correct mistakes I might make. Still lifes are wonderful motives for beginners to learn drawing and painting. And in this video, I'm going to show you some problems you might face as a beginner when drawing spherical objects and how you can solve that. So what you're going to need for our still life today is a sheet of uh, drawing paper and if possible at all, it should have a rough surface. I'm going to show you the problem with a smooth surface in a minute. So this is my recommendation. Then you need three pencils again, like in the first lesson, which is an HB, a 2B and a 4B. This is very useful if you have them. Um, you could do the whole thing with just an HB, but it will be a lot more difficult. Okay, what we are going to draw is a cabbage, an orange, and two tomatoes. And I have already uh, taken a photograph of the composition I'm going to do, but I just wanted to show you the real fruit and the real uh, vegetables so that you have kind of a physical experience of them. If you draw anything at all at home, please always try to feel your motives because that's always a good information for your brains so that it knows what it has to do. So when drawing the still life, you will face three problems. And the first problem is that they all have different surfaces. So before you start drawing, you might want to try out how you can draw the different surfaces. And as I said before, it's very useful to have rough paper and I'm going to show you why. If you want to draw a tomato, it has a very smooth surface and with a rough surface, it will be a lot easier to shade the tomato and get a very even surface. And especially with the tomato, it is all about the correct pressure of your pencil, because you can, of course, press harder, then you get darker. And as long as you keep your pencil like I'm doing it now, you won't get any edges in your tomato. But as soon as you take the pencil like this, you will have edges. But even if you do it like this on a rough paper, it will be easier to get a smooth surface on the tomato anyway. If you do the same thing on a very smooth paper, It's a lot more difficult. Can you see that? Because even if I hold my pencil like this, you can still see the lines and you will cause edges. And that's why I recommend rough paper. Okay, now with the tomato, it's fairly easy because the surface is very smooth. There are no markings on a tomato. So this should be very easy to draw. A little more difficult is the orange. And 
And again, you will have to you will have to fill the whole orange with a certain gray tone. But then of course you will have to find a way to express the small cripples on the surface. And you will have to try out which suits you best. You can do it with, you know, random lines like this, or you can even try to do the single markings as you see them. But again, before you go to your uh, real drawing, try it out so that it will come easy to you. And the same, of course, with the cabbage. And there I would take the HB because it's in comparison to the other two objects, it's very, very light. And it's a little more difficult to shade because you have so the veins on the cabbage, which are very light. And then, then you have the darker areas between the veins. And this one is the most difficult one of the three because you have to spare the white uh, parts on the cabbage and you only draw the darker ones. And sometimes you might forget that you have to spare the white here, so you will have to take an eraser. And this is always difficult. Okay, um, another trick you might want to use, I don't do it because I think drawing is about lines, but many people do it especially if you want a very smooth surface like on the tomato, you can take a brush and then wipe the pencil so, the, so that you get a very even gray tone. The same on the cabbage. As I said, I don't do it, but it's a trick you might want to use. And it's very okay if you do that. Okay, that was the first problem solved. Now, the next problem is that you have, if you have more objects, you have to think about composition. And this is always a challenge for beginners, because most beginners do the following. They so draw the biggest object, add the others, and all of a sudden they realize that they don't have enough space because they started, they started out all wrong. So if you think you might have difficulties with the composition, do yourself a favor and cut out the shapes of your fruit or your vegetables and then try the composition first. Try the various positions you might want, how they look like, how you like it. And a good trick always is to have the space at the top and the space at the bottom, which, which is left free, that it's about the same amount. And the same here, if you have a space like this, you might want to have the same space over here. And also, what does not look very good is if you have single objects, because then the viewer doesn't know which um, is above, which is below. It's a lot easier if you have clear overlaps so that the viewer knows this one is behind, the cabbage is behind the orange. Okay, and the same here, if you have two tomatoes, you might want to arrange them in a way that you have clear overlaps. 
Good. That was the second problem solved. And the third problem is perspective. Because even with a small still life, where the objects are very close to you, you still want to have a spatial depth. And that means you have to arrange your objects so that the fewer things he can go into space. And that always means that the objects, the nearest to you, have to be closest to the bottom. And I'm going to show you a photograph where I used wooden sticks with my still life so that you can see what I mean. And if you arrange a composition at home, be careful that you arrange it so that the viewer thinks he can go into your drawing. Okay, now that I've shown you the problems you might face with doing a still life, I'm going to draw the still life which I have photographed for you. Once I have established my composition is that I shade the whole thing just in, in grays. It's not about surface in the first layer, it's just about the shades of gray. And the tomatoes, of course, are very dark. The orange too is on this side a little lighter, a little darker here. And the cabbage is fairly uh, light. So this is the first step. And I'm going to let you watch without further commenting it because because I think everything you need to know is um, will become clear while you watch me. What is also important at the very end are the distinctive markings of veg vegetables and fruits. And in the case of tomatoes, it's these long stalks with the long leaves, which make it very clear to the viewer that, that these are supposed to be tomatoes. And as I said before, what you can, of course, do is take a brush and wipe over your tomatoes so that you get a very smooth surface. It's just if you have started doing it all with lines, it wouldn't look good. If you use a brush, use it everywhere in your, in your drawing so that you get a harmonious impression of the whole thing. And of course, you can always make the cast shadows more distinctive. You can, you know, do all your markings on your vegetables more distinctive, but I'm going to leave it like that now, because as, a, as an exercise, I think that will do. 
So this was the second lesson in drawing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I most certainly hope that you will join me for the next lesson when we are going to paint a still life with acrylics together. Until then, have a good time and see you soon.